All right, let's get this started. Ace Attorney, Phoenix Wright. Original game, let's go. Episode one, the first turnabout. this I've got to find someone to pin this on someone like him I'll make it look like he did it well I only know who the who the villain is August 3rd 947 a.m. at district court defense lobby number two I'll talk about this game a little on. Oh boy, am I nervous. Right? Oh, uh, hiya, Chief. <sighs> I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Not everybody takes on a motor trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Uh, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe him my current- I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just... really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over! <laughs> my life is everything is over! <laughs> Is that your client screaming over there? Yeah, it's him. Death despair! <laughs> I can't do it! I can't die! It sounds like he wants to die. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Nick! Hey! Hey! Hey there, Larry! Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell them I'm guilty! Give me the death sentence, I ain't afraid to die! What?! What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's, it's all over. I'm pissed. Pissed. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Uh, Nick, you gotta tell me. Who took my baby away? Hmm. Who's responsible for your girlfriend's death? You just gave us as it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. Yeah, I I have not been in this entire game, or at least the original first game. I have done the first two or three, but I don't know much after that. A young woman was killed in her apartment. The guy they arrested was the unlikely sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying. When something smells, it's usually the butts. In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself into trouble. One thing I can say, though. It's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. That, and I owe him one. Which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. So yeah, I have never been in this game. I have played, like I said, I played the first two, and I have seen the last one on YouTube, but that was years ago. Anyways, let's move on to August 3rd at 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The uh, defense is ready, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Y y yes, Your Honor. Yeah, I'm uh, a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you can control your nerves. Thank, thank you, Your Honor. 
Mr. Wright. Given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. And shaking, I say, fading. This test will consist of a few simple questions, and we'll answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. That would be Mr. Larry Butts. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, Your Honor. Correct. Just keep your wits about you and you'll be fine. Next question. This is a motor trial. Tell me, what was the victim's name? But I know this one. Oh, God, I've read the case report cover the cover so many times. It's... Wait. Uh-oh. Uh oh! No way, I forgot! I'm drawing a total blank here! Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the a victim. Uh, of course, I know the victim's name. I uh, just forgot temporarily. I think I feel a migraine coming on. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court report. Just press the R to check it at any time, okay? Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Mr. Wright, who is the victim in this case? Cindy's autopsy report. Time of death? July 31st, between 4 to 5 p.m. Cause of death, loss of blood due to blunt trauma. Got Maya Fay, the chief attorney at Fay & Co., my boss, and a very good attorney. Larry Butts, 8... Oh, he is 23. Well, when he said he knew him for 23 years, I thought he knew him for 23 years, but he probably saw him at grade school at 5, so he'd be 28. The defendant in this case, a likable guy who has been my friend since grade school. Cindy Stone, age 22, the victim in this case. A model. She lives in an apartment by herself. And last week we got Winston Payne, age 52. The prosecutor for this case. Lacks presence. Generally bad at getting his points across. So it was Cindy Stone. Cinder Block! <laughs> Cindy Stone. Um, no, the victim's name is Cindy Stone. Correct. Now, tell me. What was the cause of death? She died because she was poisoned, hit with a blunt object, strangled. Hit with a blunt object. She was struck once by a blunt object. Correct. You answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then. First. A question for the prosecutor, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor. As Mr. Wright told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what that object was? The murder weapon was the statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. The statue was added to the court record. The statue in the shape of the finger. It's rather heavy. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during this trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use the R button to check the court record frequently. Mr. Payne, the prosecution, prosecution may call its first witness. The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecu to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything... unfortunate. Uh-oh. There, he gets excited easily. This could be bad. Hmm. <clears throat> Mr. Butts, is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy! We were great together! We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra, and Mark Anthony! Uh, didn't they all die? Definitely everybody died at the end. Phoenix, calm down. I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me. Ever. What to you anyways? Mr. Bats, what you described is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. What do you mean, one of them? 
Live! All of it! Live! I don't believe a word of it! Your Honor, the victim's passports. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport was added to the court record. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris on... July 30th, the day before the murder. Hmm, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude. No way. The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. Daddies? Sugar? Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to supply her lifestyle. Dude. You can clearly see what kind of woman this Miss Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Buzz, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Should I... Stop him from answering. My client had no idea the victim was seeing other men. That question is irrelevant in this case. <laughs> Dude, Nick, what do you mean, irrelevant? That shit and she dog! I'm gonna die! I'm just gonna drop dead! Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this! Hey, well, let's continue the trial, shall we? I believe the accused murder is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is so not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim of Pullman on the day of the murder, did you not? <laughs> well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, uh, maybe I did and uh, maybe I didn't. Uh-oh, you went. Uh, what do I do? Have a man so honestly, this is the court. You have to be honest. <sighs> I'll send him a signal. Tell... The. Truth. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I was there, I went. Order! Well, Mr. Butts? Dude, chill. She wasn't home, man, so, like, I didn't see her. Your Honor, the defendant is lying. Lying? The prosecution would like to call a witness who, who can prove Mr. Butts is lying. Well, that simplifies matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body, just before making the gruesome discovery. He saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Schowitz to the stand. Mr. Schowitz, you sell newspaper subscriptions, is that correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, yes! Mr. Schowitz, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. The witness's account, witness testimony. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing from an apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her lying there, a woman, not moving, dead! I wild and fright and found myself unable to go inside. I decided to call the police immediately. However, the phone in our apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found the public phone. I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. The man who ran was without a doubt the defendant sitting right over there. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some Corbus phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sherwood used was one of those. Your Honor, I have a record of the blackout for your... For, for your... For usual? The blackout report was added to the court report. Electricity to Mrs. Stone building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. Now, Mr. Wright. Yes, uh, yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor? 
You may begin your cross-examination. Cross-examination. Your Honor? All right, all right, right. This is it, the real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you exposed the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really guilty? How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's te testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find the contradiction between the court report and the witness's te testimony. When, once you've found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it in the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court report, the all button, then point out the contradiction in the testimony. Alright, I remember what this one is. But I'd like to just read it all anyway, so... And I'm not going to do the voice for this one. I was going door the door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing from the apartment. Isn't a man leaving an apartment a common sight? I find it odd you would take notice of him. <laughs> I don't know, he just seems strange to me, that's all. Like he was mad and yet frightened at the same time. Just like a criminal fleeing the scene of a crime. The defense requests that the witness refrain from conjecture. Of course. What the witness means is that the man he saw looked suspicious. So what happened next? So he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Half open, you say? Yes, yes, the door is open halfway. Yes! I watched for a moment, but no one came close to the door. That's odd in a big city like this. I saw it. I see. So what happened next? Thinking a stranger looks inside the apartment. What gave you the idea to do that? Well, the door was half open, you see. Isn't it only human to want to peek? We climb mountains because there they are. It's the same thing. True words have never been spoken. Anyone would look inside. No, that's called being a peep, a perv, or a freak, or any other word. Hmm, why did Pain cut him off so quickly? So, you look into the apartment. What happened then? And I saw her there, a woman not moving dead. Are you sure she was dead? Well, uh, no, I guess I wasn't. But she wasn't moving at all, and there was blood everywhere. I guess that would look like... that would look fatal to anyone. Very well, what happened next? I quailed in fright and found myself unable to go inside. So, you didn't touch... Anything in the apartment? Oh, huh. yes, I mean, no, nothing! Okay, what happened next? And how did he know the phone wasn't working? I thought to call the police immediately. Oh, shoot. But the phone in the apartment wasn't working. You thought to call the police? Does that mean you didn't actually call them? Please, please, listen to the rest of the testimony. You thought to call the police. What happened next? The phone apartment was not working. The phone apartment wasn't working? Yes, I mean, no, it wasn't, right? But you said you didn't go in the apartment. Or did you? Oh, uh, that, I can explain that. There was a cordless phone on a shelf by the entranceway. I reached inside and tried using it to call. And that phone wasn't working, correct? What happened next? I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Why use a public phone? Well, you see, I don't have a cell phone. And being in the middle of the afternoon, there was no answer at the nearby apartments. Ah, right. What time did you say it was again? I don't remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Hold it. 1 p.m. Are you certain? Yes, absolutely. He seems really confident. 1 p.m.? Right. Doesn't that seem strange to you? Press some evidence to contradict him. So yeah, let's move on. That's all it. Oh. I thought that was the end of it. Sorry. Manuel anyway, is out the defendant right over there. Are you absolutely 100% positive? Yes, it was him. No mistaking about it. The witness says he's certain. That's all of it. Yep, yep, yep. 
Okay, hold on. Uh, can I go to the options real quick? Die between 4 p.m. and 5 p.m. OBJECTION! You found the body at 1 p.m., are you sure? Yes, it was 1 p.m. for certain. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? Oh, that, oh, uh. This is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Schwartz, why were you so sudden when you found you, that you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I, uh, that's a really good question. Great job, great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. Three through one and their whole story fall apart. <laughs> 